What is up guys, this is Tito back with another video on the Redmi K20 Pro and today in this video, I'm gonna be showing you the Project Radiant version 12.0 or based on Android 12.0 preview 2. And I have been daily driving this ROM for about 4 days now and in my frank opinion, this is one of the best Android 12 ROMs that I have tested on the Redmi K20 Pro in terms of stability and performance. So let me show you the features of this ROM. Of course, this is based on Android 12 as you can see and there was a preview one that I was on and from that I updated to this particular build by just dirty flashing with the recovery. And if you have no idea how to flash uh, Android 12 ROM on your device, you can check out the description box for the how to flash guide. There I have flashed a uh, Android 11 ROM but with the same method you can flash this particular ROM. If your storage is decrypted, let me tell you, you can just flash your Android 11 latest firmware which is about 99 or 100 MB, just the firmware and then you can flash the ROM file and then you can flash the fcrypt disveller. Of course, I'm talking about the gapps variant over here. Otherwise, if you're flashing with the vanilla variant, you need to flash a separate gapps if you are flashing the vanilla variant. But of course, I always flash the gapps variant. That's why I did the same over here. And this ROM uses OSS vendor and perf kernel here it shows. SLinux Stereos is permissive over here if you're noticing. So right now, let me show you the about section. By the way, this is how the recent panel looks like over here. And if you want to go into the split screen and stuff, you can just go into the split screen from right here or pin a particular app, then go to freeform. By the way, I have enabled the freeform from the developer options over here. That's why I'm getting that over there. Right now, let me show you the about section. By the way, on the top, we get the Radiant or the Project Radiant logo right here. And if you keep tapping on the Android 12, you will get this clock. Then if you make it on 12, it makes it show you, you still get this Android 12's Easter egg. So that is cool. Inside Project Radiant, it shows 12.0.0 Preview 2 and the maintainer's name is Sheriff Rahim. So huge thanks to the developer for this amazing ROM. And we have the security patch level of latest October 5th, 2021. And we have the stock kernel here again is the Perf G kernel. You can see the build date 21st October 2021 from the bottom. I have been using with a the dark theme, that's why it looks like this. Let me just disable that for the time being. And once you disable the dark theme, smoothly goes into the white theme. Once you enable the dark theme again, as you can see how smoothly it goes, there is no glitches or something over here. But from the preview one, I would say I'm noticing one difference. That is the locking animation and stuff are totally gone right now, which I'm missing, but not gonna lie, that was really good looking. But right now, as you can see, the screen is kind of flickering. So that simply means this round does not have the DC dimming yet, but these are like initial builds. So they will be added in the future updates, I guess. So this is how my home screen looks like. Of course, this is a pixel launcher. If you want to go into the settings, let me show you how it looks. Here is how it looks and you have the suggestion disabling options still. But if you go into the search your phone, you get these kind of options. And we have the allow home screen rotation and stuff. But no double tap to sleep anywhere in the home screen or even in the status bar. There is no double tap to sleep. But while locking, earlier in the preview one, it used to do an amazing animation. But right now that is gone. Let me show you. If I press the power button, as you can see, it directly goes into sleep. And of course, this is how the always on display looks like. Let me just double tap over here. And this is how the lock screen looks like. We still have the big lock screen clock font. Looks very cool, I would say. And the fingerprint scanner looks a little different. Let me show you the speed of it. And as you can see, it unlocks. It unlocks very, very fast. Let me show you one more time from the always on display. As you can see, it unlocks again very fast and it is a very snappy experience, I would say, with unlocking with the fingerprint scanner, I mean. Let me show you one more time. So sometimes I have seen from the always on display, it does not unlock right away. Once you tap the fingerprint scanner, you have to double tap once. Let me show you one more time. So as you can see, it unlocks. Very fast and very reliable experience with the fingerprint scanner, no issues whatsoever. But what it still has is the charging animation. Let me show you. Once you plug in the device, this is how beautiful it looks. Let me show you from the lock screen. The charging animation is there, but again, the locking animations are removed. I have added a couple of widgets as you can see in the home screen. This is the clock widget. Let me actually tap onto it and this is how the clock looks like of Android 12. Looks very beautiful. All the buttons are bigger now. And once you go into home, this is how the animation looks. It looks very beautiful as you can see. And let me show you. I have added another clock widget which you can add from going to the widgets. And if you scroll down more, then you will get this clock widget. And from here, you can add these clock widgets. 
they look very very beautiful and of course all of them changes colors depending on the wallpaper let me actually show you if i drag it like this and if i put it over here as you can see the color of this changes and if i put it over here the color of the minute or the hour bar actually changes as you can see even the seconds color actually changes so yeah this is very cool that it changes colors depending on the wallpaper and of course you can change the size of it if you want to to the left of the home screen we still get the google's discover page no issues with that and swiping up actually gets you to the app drawer as you can see this is how the app drawer looks like this panel looks darker because i just disabled the dark theme but otherwise if i reboot the device i think it will be fixed and you can search for any particular app over here let me actually show you as you can see searching for any particular app works totally fine you can have the keyboard always over here in the app drawer if you want to do that you can click yes and from here as well you get the preference options so yeah and all the animations again going into the quick setting panel and expanding it also there are more quick setting panel toggles that you can add so right now let me just show you the quick setting panel toggles this is how it looks like we have the internet toggle right here and if you click here you can get your mobile data also as well as the wi-fi right here and then we have the bluetooth settings but let me tell you one thing that i am not liking over here there is no vaulty icon also the bluetooth kind of icon if you're noticing this is how the bluetooth icon looks like but it does not show you the bluetooth battery percentage in the status bar for that you have to expand the quick setting panel then you can see the battery percentage of your like device whatever bluetooth device you are using so that's how it is a really weird situation i would say i mean it should show the bluetooth battery status on the status bar itself not really sure why the battery status does not appear in the status bar but yes you have to expand your quick setting panel toggle to actually see the battery percentage of your bluetooth device and that's how it is maybe because it's a initial build but yeah we'll wait for the future updates right now let me show you more toggles like the flashlight and stuff everything is working as you can see so no issues with that also we have the auto rotate and the device control or the google home controls but if you go into this google home pretty sure it will pause your video or whatever you are watching on your screen so that's how i'm not liking that but yeah that's how it is in android 12 and we have the battery saver the dark theme and we have the screen recorder you can call it the android 12 screen recorder right now with that you can record the device audio and the microphone audio at the same time so that works fine also we have the do not disturb the data saver the hotspot the nearby share and the camera access mic access disabling option or enabling option and we have the night light yes night light works super fine here but again no dc dimming option and here we have the moto audio all right so you can go into the custom now you can actually manually customize your presets of the equalizer just like this as you can see but let me tell you i have been using it with the smart audio and with moto audio the sound quality via a bluetooth headset or a 3.5 mm headphone jack or even the speakers are totally great no issues whatsoever i have had this is how the stock dialer looks like and i would say yes it looks cool this is how the default in call ui looks but again no call recording option but vaulty calling is actually working fine here but there is no vaulty icon on the status bar again and in the quick setting panel itself we get this power menu and this is how the power menu looks like this looks very cool i would say and you can also bring it with the power button of course and you can go into the settings from right here now some of the thing that we'll notice right out of the box and that will be very helpful to you is these things like the safety net well it passes right out of the box so you can use banking apps like google pay or whatever banking apps you're using right out of the box over here you don't need to flash magisk or use magisk hide for using banking apps that is very cool if you go into the drm info as you can see you have the l1 certification so that simply means you can get your netflix or amazon prime working with trinity p over here now by default there is only this weird camera app that i'm not really liking let me actually show you i haven't even opened it this is how it looks like and yeah you can use this camera app if you want to but i'm not really sure who is this actually for because this camera app is it might be buggy or something so yeah this is a very old kind of google camera but i have installed the google camera or gcam 7.3 by unix and this is what i'm using gcam 7.3 unix version 2.5 or something and this is actually working fine perfectly fine and you have all these like lens changing options and stuff they are working totally fine also night side pictures are there the camera actually works totally fine as you can see let me just bring it just like that and yeah also i have installed a gcam go that too works fine here but of course as this is android 12 very early so that's why i cannot install anx cameras of now i think 
I haven't even tried that but yeah not really sure if a next camera will work as of now I would suggest just stick with Gcam if you are on Android 12. Some apps looks very cool like the calculator app as you can see this is how it looks you can bring this just down like this and you can scroll it down or scroll it up just like this on the calculator app and it looks very very cool in my personal opinion and once you are tapping a number this is how it looks like very satisfying looking and here again the volume panel looks like this i haven't showed you the volume panel that's why i'm showing you right now and you can expand it just like this and once you are like doing this let me show you it has very cool animation once you are increasing or decreasing the volume and of course you can put the phone into vibrate or silent from right here now it's time to jump into the settings and show you the settings panel and in the battery settings this is how it looks like and i have 77 percent juice left right now Talking about the battery life, I have been getting very good battery life. I have been getting about 5 to 6 hours of screen on time. We also have the thermal profiles here and you can actually select per app's thermal profile to default benchmark camera browser etc. We have the battery usage and from here you can see the full battery usage from right here. But sometimes this battery status goes away and it doesn't stay from 100% that I have been noticing. But yeah, the battery life again is good as you can see from the screenshots on the screen. So you can calculate that and you can get pretty much 6 plus hours of screen on time without any issues. I have been using it, no issues whatsoever. Also the fast charging works super fine here. The 33 watt fast charger that I'm using working perfectly fine. And we also have a battery saver. If you use that, you are going to get more battery life out of it. And the battery manager is there. Then we have the battery percentage enabling option that will enable the battery percentage on the status bar. In the sound settings, this is how it looks like. We have the now playing and the media and stuff. Then if you scroll down more, we have the dial pad tones, the screen locking sound, charging sound, charging vibration, etc. And we also have the Mi Audio Direct. That is very cool. And this section actually looks very beautiful. You can enable the Audio Direct from right here. You can choose between the headsets from right here. And the sound quality with the headphone jack again is great. And the sound presets you can also choose. There is also the Hi-Fi Audio option if you want to use that. Now in the system panel, this is actually looking a little weird, but this is how it looks. We have the front camera sound effects and you can enable or disable the sound effects for the pop-up camera, of course, from here and camera LED, you can enable or disable from right here. Let me go back and we have the language and input and the default keyboard over here is Gboard. Let me actually go back in the gestures. We have the quickly open camera and then we have the system navigation gestures. From here, you can enable the full screen gestures if you go into the settings. We have the swipe to invoke assistant and of course that works super fine here, no issues. Also saying ok Google invokes the assistant so that is not a problem either. And we have the new kind of animation as you can see from right here, looks very beautiful. Also we have the three button navigation if you want to enable that and the one handed mode is there. I have enabled that that's why as you can see it is working perfectly fine. We have the press and hold power button for assistant if you want to enable that. Swipe to screenshot is here but let me show you if I do this. It actually makes that sound and right now it had that edit and share option. But let me show you if I am in an app that has a long kind of position. Let me show you from right here. So as you can see, it brings that capture mode and if you click on that, it gives you option top and bottom wherever you want to take a screenshot. So you can take a screenshot just like this and it will actually show you how much it's selecting just like that. So this is a version of kind of a Google markup but this is very cool in my frank opinion so if you want to take a screenshot just like this you can save it from right here or if you want to edit that you can go into edit then you can add some text if you want to from right here let me just show you and let's just select the color whatever text that i have added not really sure why i just type like that but yeah you can even do a highlighting stuff from like this and you can save that or you can share that from right here or you can crop it up more if you want to so yeah, this is very cool that we have this new kind of screenshot feature of Android 12. We have the prevent ringing right here. Let me go back and we have the search for printers. It shows for some reason, but if you go into it, this is just the backup section over here just to take your Google Drive backup of your app data. And this is how the developer options looks like. If you click on it, as you can see, this is the developer option. Let me scroll down more. We have the system UI tuner. From here, you can go into the status bar. You can enable the headset icon from right here. Or if you want to disable the Wi-Fi icon or something for some reason, you can do that. And if you want to know about the performance of this ROM, I would say the performance has been really, really great. I have had no issues. Here are the performance benchmarks of N220 and Geekbench. Also, you can see the CPU stress test of this ROM. 
Right now, let me show you the display settings. This is how it looks like. We have the brightness level. The auto brightness works super fine, no issues. In the lock screen, we have the settings like this. Always on display, you can enable or disable from right here. Wake screen for notification is also there. And we have the screen timeout and stuff. And you can go up to 30 minutes with the screen timeout. Let me scroll down mode. We have the dark theme. But again, there is no pitch black kind of dark theme option as of right now. This is just a normal dark theme. It has the tint of your wallpaper, of course, with the Monet engine kind of thing. So that's how it is. Even in the white theme, you might be noticing a little bit of cyan effect from this wallpaper. The font size, display size, DPI, you can change from right here. Night light, you can change from right here. And we have the colors. And from these colors, you can actually change the color kind of balance. As you can see, red, green, and blue. Let me scroll down over here. We have the auto rotate and the double tap to wake. And the display cutout is there for some reason and the ambient display option is also there. Let me go back. We have the headline and body font changing option. Again, double tap to wake is there and it is working fine. But there is no double tap to sleep as of right now. In the wallpapers and styles, this is how it looks like. And we have the change wallpaper option. If you click on that, this is how you get the wallpapers. And from here, you are going to get these beautiful looking wallpapers. And we have the living universe as well. So you can download the live wallpapers if you want to. Also, we have pretty much all the Google's wallpapers over here. Also, we have the themed icons and I have enabled that. That's why it looks like this. As you can see, the GPA, the photos and the calculator, the phone app, messaging, YouTube, everything has the new icons. But again, some apps do not have implemented those kind of icons as you can see. And this is how it looks like as of now if you want to enable the themed icons. But if you just go without it, it will look much better, I would say, much normal in my frank opinion because not all the icons has those themed icon look. The app grid, you can also change from right here. You have up to 5x5 five five grid option. And also you can change the accent color if you don't like the default one to the other one. Let me actually show you if you want to or if you don't like the default one. Or you can go to the basic colors and just go with one single accent color if you want to from right here. Now, some of the cool things that I have noticed in this Android 12 is that once you are in landscape mode here, let me actually show you in the landscape mode. Once you go into the quick setting panel, it looks very beautiful. Once you are even scrolling it down, as you can see, once you are expanded, it looks very beautiful in the quick setting panel. And of course, you can increase or decrease the brightness with this huge bar right here, the brightness slider bar. Also, right now, if I go into the power menu or something, just notice the power menu. How beautiful it looks. In Android 12, everything just looks way more rounded and way more beautiful in my frank opinion. Also, the volume panel looks like this in landscape mode. So after daily driving this for a long time, I have had no issues whatsoever. And this was one of the most beautiful experience I've ever had on the Redmi K20 Pro with Android 12 in my frank opinion. Let me know in the comments. What do you guys think? Thank you so much for watching this video, guys. Give it a thumbs up if you liked it. Share this video with your friends if they have a K20 Pro. And if they want to know how Android 12 is running right now on their devices, please subscribe to the channel if you have not yet. This is Tito from KDNDX signing off for today. And I'll be catching you guys in the next one. Bye now.